What's up guys, it's Mizuna once again playing some Minecraft on the Direwolf 20 1.10.2 mod pack. We're on a server, we're having a good time, we built a door, and as you can see, I did what I told you I was going to do in between episodes. Cleaned up this place, made the input for the door, also some storage going on here stuff in the crafting table we'll get to that in a second and if we walk on these pressure plates here they are silent pressure plates from ender io then this is resetting a signal downstairs and that means that as long as like it's like a five second delay something like that but um if i walk backwards here then you'll see the door close behind me after a short delay now in this room, you can hear some flowing lava, uh, not lava, water. If I turn around here, BAM! Big reveal. Got myself a room, guys. Do you like it? Do you like my room? This is a weird bug I'm having. I don't understand what the deal is here. Every time I log out, these, uh, these lights stop producing light for some reason and need to be reset. See, now it's fine. Weird. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I built this room. I like it. I think it's pretty awesome, actually. I think it's a really nice-looking basement area. Uh, used some andesite, um, slanted stone blocks here. I think they're andesite. If I'm... Maybe they just defaulted to stone or something. I'm not sure. Used some uh, diorite bricks from Quark and some diorite brick stairs there. Use some basalt and a lapis block there for the door. These are iron pressure plates. Don't let the Wayla tooltip fool you. And then some flowing water in the corners. Little pedestal bits for the lighting on this side of the room. And uh, light above and below the flowing water here. So that's what we got going on down in the basement. Nothing is actually practically new but we're going to change that in today's episode. So you can see, I've got some stuff in my inventory here. I'm going to put back on my armor. Got some stuff in my inventory, and I've got a thing stored here in my crafting table. This is the Hellfire Forge from Blood Magic. This is the starting block from Blood Magic. You can see it's just iron, gold, more iron, and then any of the stones work. So smooth stone, granite, diorite, or andesite will work craft that bam hellfire forge crafted and we are going to put this down in our basement area today if you haven't guessed yet for some reason we're gonna get into blood magic so i'm gonna pop that down right there i think that's a nice place for it and i've got some stuff in my inventory as well this demonic will you get this from, you can see an imprint of a demonic entity attached to a creature. It can be obtained by killing a mob with a sentient weapon, which I don't have, or by throwing a snare at the mob and killing it when it has some white particles coming from it. So if we look at the recipe for the snare, you get four of them for four string, a bit of redstone, and some iron. So I went out, I killed me a creeper, got some demonic will. Now we're going to use this demonic will to build a the starting item in blood magic you can see this this uh, bar fills up on the right hand side here and bam we have a petty tataric gem so this guy stores will that drops from creatures which you can get by throwing rudimentary snares at them which is fine if you want to do it that way uh i don't so what you should do is immediately throw that petty tataric gem back in your hellfire forge with a little bit more will and an iron sword that's gonna cook up once again and give us a sentient sword so this guy will uh has some really cool features first off it gains attack damage as the will in your inventory increases. And that Tataric gem that we just had, I guess I'm going to have to make another one of those. I did not realize that it used that up in the crafting table. My bad. Uh, but that's not a huge deal. We can do that. I think I have some gold here, some iron here, some redstone here. I believe it was glass. Hmm, don't have any glass. All right, that's fine. 
I'll go upstairs, grab myself some glass, while we talk about the sentient sword. So it's got some really cool features. First off, it increases its attack damage based on the will that is in the Tataric Gym in your inventory. So the more, the more you fight with it, and the more mobs you kill with it, the stronger it becomes, basically. Um, and I do not know if there's actually a cap to that bonus attack damage, which is really cool. Uh, it can also be enchanted, which is quite cool. Um, and... Is that not the recipe? It's not iron, it's lapis. Okay, I have that. But, um, yeah, so... The other thing it does is when you kill mobs with it, they... Oop. I did not mean to click. When you kill mobs with it, they automatically drop their, uh, those little shards of demonic will stuff. Um, I just want this not to close. No, stop. Lapis. There we go. So, it's a really good way to farm the will, which you're going to need to make your basic blood magic, uh, items. So there we go, that's cooking up. Gonna give me another Tataric Gym. This is going to basically replace my Manual and Broadsword, which... I mean, it's not actually as good as my Manual and Broadsword, but it is... Um, it is kind of cool. We're gonna need a lot of this will. So, I'm gonna throw this on the ground, and you can see when we go over and pick it up, it's going to be automatically put into our petty Tataric Gym. Um, and this guy has a cap for how much will it can hold. I'm not sure how much that is. Okay, so now we've got a few items from Blood Magic. What's next? Well, the most basic of all the items in the Blood Magic mod, which as you can see is quite large, the most basic of all of these, and the thing that you're going to be using most often, is the Blood Altar. So you can see we need some demonic will to make this work. So we're gonna go have to we're gonna have to go kill some mobs um, and keep the Tatar gym out of our inventory. So we get some demonic will, but gold, stone, and a furnace will give us a blood altar. So this is an item that we're going to have to craft if we want to get anywhere with blood magic. The next thing that we're going to need once we have the blood altar is Tome used to store experience. Interesting. <laughs> Most interesting. So, the next thing we're going to need to craft after we get our blood altar, which means I need to go out and kill a mob or two, try and get some will, is put a diamond in there with this stuff called LP, and that gives us a weak blood will. How do we get LP, you ask? It's quite simple. Um, but I think I'm going to talk about it when I can actually craft the... Uh, the altar. So, what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to, you can see a zombie spawner marked on my map. I'm going to actually grab, well, no, there's cobblestone down to the uh, mine shaft. I am going to grab some blocks to convert this zombie spawner into a functional, if basic, And we are going to then use these zombies to farm up some will and some experience. Um, I want to get there with you guys here, if I can remember how to get there, that is. I think we go up this way, around this way. I was just mining, clearing out some... Here it is, perfect. Alright, so, the zombies are going to spawn in this... I'm going to break this. And if it was dark in here, zombies would spawn in here. This isn't quite big enough for super efficient mob spawning, so I'm actually going to expand it out two blocks. I do need to see just how much larger we need this to be. mobs in Minecraft can spawn in a 9x9, nine nine, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and if we go 4 blocks
goes the other direction, one, two, three, four, then box this in, then we can create, a, create ourselves a zombie spawner. And then I'm just going to have an easy way to access the mobs and to kill them, and it'll be a super basic mob spawner. So I'm going to get to work on that, um, and we'll come back when that's done, and I'm a slaughtering some monsters. I'll be right back. And we're back! So I just literally just now broke the lights, and we already have two zombies in here. So now it's pretty easy for me to just sit here, kill these guys. I'm gonna get experience. I'm gonna get will. You can see I picked up some will in my Petrotaric gym there. Which means that this sword is gonna start doing more and more damage. I'm actually going to turn on my item magnet here. And this should be really, really quite easy. Um, I'm going to move this conjured light back a couple of blocks, just so that uh, it's too bright apparently. Oh, back there. I want it to be 100% spawnable in there, and not spawnable out here. Is the goal here. So yeah, like I said. Ooh, ooh. And there is a problem with... He can't see me. <laughs> problem with the mob spawner there. Um, so I'm actually going to turn this guy off and then... He cannot see me if I stand in these bones. That's really funny, actually. We're gonna solve this baby zombie problem here. So we can already see I've got 6.26 will in my... Wow, they're loud. So I'm going to... Uh, kill off the rest of these guys. And then to fix the baby the baby zombie spawning issue that we have and i will be right back basically all that entails is i'm gonna put a um they can still spawn in the corners basically we're gonna put a slab here so that baby zombies can't get out then i'm just gonna sit and farm for a while farm up some will in my tataric gym get some will so i can build the blood altar pick up some experience as well um, might get into enchanting this episode because we do now have a sword that can be enchanted and that should be rather fun so i'm gonna fix the problems with this tiny little basic design and uh farm up and then i'll meet you back at base where we will have our Blood altar. Be right back. Okay, we farmed it up. We got a full petty Tataric gym, holding 64 will. Our sword does 7.5 attack damage, which isn't bad, but compared to my manual and broadsword, which doesn't have a single modifier on it yet, uh, which does 12.2 attack damage, pretty underwhelming. It's okay, this petty tar Tataric... Tataric gym... Uh, gets better pretty easily, actually. If we just put some will in a Hellfire Forge with a block of lapis, a block of redstone, and a diamond, we'll get a lesser Tataric gem, and that will allow us to um, hold more will, and the sword will do more damage. There are also other sentient tools which will get faster and better the more will you have in your inventory, so... Kind of a cool system. Might use it for a while since we're getting into blood magic. Not sure. Anyway, I have here a blood altar. Just a little bit of stone, gold, one of those demonic wills, which, by the way, a uh, little bit of a hot tip for you. If you have a Tataric gem in your inventory, even if it's full, the will that you pick up will still be absorbed by the gem. So get this out of your inventory to actually get one of these for crafting. Um just uh, an important tip for you there so yeah we have the recipe here gonna pick up that blood altar no achievement or anything which i'm thinking is probably because it requires 
requires some sort of I really thought that Blood Magic would have had achievements. That's odd. A little bit disappointing, actually. A little bit disappointing. Oh well. Anyway, I'm um, gonna put this down in my basement. Right smack dab in the middle, right here. This is not the permanent place for this blood altar. The blood altar is a multi-block structure which goes up to 17 by 17 blocks. Like, it gets pretty freaking big. So this is not going to be the permanent location. Just like this is not our permanent base. In fact, probably next episode we're going to have to look at getting into a better base location. Um, which will come with a whole host of other things that we do. But... Now that we have our blood altar, what do we do? As you saw, when we need the weak blood orb, which we need for a bunch of crafting recipes, and anything, like you can hit U on the blood altar and see all of its recipes, anything that you put in there and want to, like, do, <laughs> I guess, requires LP. And if you... I wonder if this is... Is this a... I wonder if that's the in-game documentation. There didn't used to be in-game documentation, so uh, that would be really exciting. Um, because I don't know this mod very well. I'm just kind of going by the seat of my pants here. But anyway, Weak Blood Orb, 2,000 LP. That stands for Life Points, and it also says Tier 1. Don't worry, we'll get into that later. Um, if you've never seen this mod, that stands for Life Points. Now, you get Life Points into the altar uh, in a number of different ways. One is by cutting yourself. Uh, we got to become a cutter. So... <laughs> glass, any type of glass will do Iron and gold So we need to go get ourselves Five pieces of glass um, And basically life points Life essence is blood Thus blood magic You can use your own blood And you can use the life essence of mobs To do this, but that comes later So we're going to go grab some glass We're going to craft this sacrificial knife I heard a creeper So, we need to craft the sacrificial dagger, and we can then use this near the blood altar to put LP, and it will hurt you. Don't, like, don't make any mistake. This will hurt you. Um, so, keep that in mind when doing this, that you can, you can kill yourself here, so you have to be careful. So, you can see, if I look at this blood altar, prick my finger then there's some red goo in the blood altar. Now that's going to drain away pretty quickly. Um, and the reason for that is the blood altar has a buffer tank, like an internal fluid tank, because blood is a fluid, treated as a fluid for the purposes of other mods, and you can pipe it around and do things with it. Um, I'm not sure how much we'll do with that this on this uh, server, but we'll see. So then if I just... my finger a bunch of times, that should give me a decent amount of blood in there. If we want to see how much blood is in there, we're going to have to build ourselves a divination sigil. Now that comes from a blank slate, which is stone in a tier 1 blood altar with 1000 LP. Luckily we have a tier 1 blood, blood altar. Don't have 1000 LP yet, but I'll get there. And that needs also alchemy array and redstone how do you make this arcane ashes arcane ashes bone meal gunpowder redstone and coal and don't worry this is multi-use um so we'll be getting into this in just a second i'm going to sit here and prick my finger i'm also going to go need to pick up some more food for a little while and i will come back when we have some blood in here and are making our first slate Alright, I got myself some more food in the form of baguettes from Actually Editions. These are just dough smelted, which is two wheat in the crafting grid. A little bit more efficient than just eating bread, which is three wheat. Um, so, we 
had some more dough to smelt. But then I had to smelt some stone because of that blank slate that we require to get the divination sigil. Divination sigil, blank slate, blank slate, 1000 LP in a blood altar with stone. And it does have to be smooth stone, not andesite, diorite, or granite for those of you who are curious. So if we just pop this in here, see little particles surrounding it. And I don't know how much blood is in my altar right now, so I'm going to put some more in there. There you go. We have ourselves a blank slate. So that's the primary crafting mechanic in this mod. Um, there are actually a lot of crafting mechanics in this mod, to be honest, but that's one of them, definitely. If you then use this, want to use this blank slate to make a divination sigil, as I said, we need redstone the blanks, and the blank slate in an alchemy array, which you can see this arcane ashes used to draw an alchemy circle. These are made in the Hellfire Forge with redstone, gunpowder, coal, and bone meal. So do I have all of those ingredients? I think it might sound muffle this door. Um, it is a little bit loud. So we have bone meal. We have coal. I know we need redstone. And we need... What was the other thing? gunpowder which we have excellent so now we can go down to our uh to our hellfire forge down here pop in bone meal coal redstone gunpowder and our tartaric gym which is full and this will use a little bit of will to craft this or maybe it won't i guess it won't uh Okay, so apparently you can get arcane ashes without any of your will being used. Interesting. Uh, anyway, so now we have arcane ashes. We're going to need another piece of redstone and this blank slate. And I can show you another crafting mechanic from this mod. If we go upstairs here, you want to be outside for these, um, I believe. It might not be necessary, but I'm going to do it outside and little bit of a more open area. Some of these get a little bit dramatic, let's say. It's getting dark out, so I'm going to want to do this pretty quick. If you put your arcane ashes on the ground, you can see it uses one out of, I believe you have 20 uses of those. Then you need a catalyst. So the catalyst for this particular recipe, as you can see when clicking on it, down here, is redstone. So if you click on this alchemy circle, with redstone, bam, then, or that's your reagent, is redstone. Then you can see you've got an eye on it. If you then click on this with whatever you're trying to craft with, the catalyst, which in this case is a blank slate, you get a nifty little, this is cool, like really, really cool, really fun, really magical feeling. And poof, I have myself a divination, divination sigil. Click everything from this mod once to bind it to yourself. You can see current owner, Mizuna737. Um, that's kind of important to make everything work in this mod. And we are going to use this, and it'll be able to tell us how much LP numerically we actually have in our blood altar downstairs. So if I go back downstairs, definitely going to sound muffle this between clips and we right click this guy, you can see we have 3,800 LP out of a current capacity of 10,000 LP. So that's really good. We, 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 have, we have some LP stored up in there and it's easy to get more, just it's basically food into LP as long as you're not in a dangerous situation. So what do we want to do next? Next, we want a diamond in here to give us a weak blood orb. That's important uh, that's an important item to get further into this mod so we're gonna go upstairs grab a diamond we already have the lp to do this and i'm gonna craft this on camera with you guys and then we're going to cut for a moment i'm gonna sound muffle that and um and then we'll see what we're gonna do next in this episode um, so if I click this on here, you can see red particles again, and you can see the LP decreasing. It takes a little while because this is a tier 1 altar. 
Um, how this altar gets built up is you build it up with rooms. You can see there are a bunch of different types of rooms here. The first upgrade needs eight of these uh, blank rooms, which is just stone and blank slates. So we can do this really quickly. Um, and then you can get other types of runes that do things for you, like speed runes increase the speed of crafting, efficiency runes decrease the cost, runes of sacrifice increase the blood you get from hurting mobs, runes of self-sacrifice pretty self-explanatory, you prick your finger you get more LP for it, displacement runes uh, that involves pumping in and out, interesting, uh, and there we have it, a weak blood orb. Right click once, it's going to hurt, and that is now bound to me. This stores life essence in our personal soul network. So you have LP in your altar. You also have LP in your own personal network. So you can see I have 200 now. Now I have 400. That's what you're actually going to use to... Uh, to do things with this mod. If I, like, see there's 1800 LP in this blood altar. If you put an orb on an altar, you can see purple particle, particle effects, and you can see that LP is getting drained out of the altar and getting put into my own personal network. Very, very cool. All right, so I'm going to cut here. I'm probably going to craft this book which I don't know what it does. I think it's, I hope it's the in-game documentation so I can see where I'm going next here. And sound muffle that door, and we will be right back. Okay, guys. I crafted the book off camera. I sound muffled the door off camera. Um, you can see if I stand here much quieter. If you're curious how I did that, by the way, there is a block from Extra Utilities called the Sound Muffler, which is just a note block and a piece of wool. Note block, if you don't know, is just planks around a piece of redstone. And in an area of effect, it will muffle all noise. Um, so if I was, if it's right behind this block at the moment. If it was even closer, it'd muffle it even more. I don't mind the sound, it's just a little bit too loud. I also crafted this book from, uh, from Blood Magic, which is not in-game documentation at all. It's actually just uh, a way to usefully map out your altar. So if I go here, you can put it all the way up to tier 6. And if you shift right click the blood altar, it will give you a little preview of where blocks need to go. Um, anyway, sorry, a little bit of a, uh, lost my train of thought. I also had to fix the door off camera. It, it freaked out and broke. <laughs> I stepped over the plates at exactly the wrong time. Uh, need to find a way to make that foolproof, but we'll figure it out, I guess. Anyhow, it's that time, guys. It's time to wrap up the episode. I know it's always sad, but I'll be back again tomorrow with more content for you. Um, tomorrow, I do believe we're going to be looking into uh, the matter. Where are they? There they are. Matter transmitters and matter receivers from RF tools. With these, we can teleport back and forth. Now, as you can see, we're going to need some iron, but we're, we're going to need some ender pearls and also just a little bit of lapis. That's easy to do. So, ender pearls. So, off camera, in between episodes, I'm going to be enderman hunting, and I am going to find myself six ender pearls and, um, so that we can look into teleportation. Why do I want this? Well, because this is, space is not going to cut it. Um, basically, I made this basement as a glorified door to my new base. We're going to have some simple power gen over here, probably just solar panels hooked up to a battery or something like that, with some RF tools, teleporters, both a receiver and a um, transmitter here and on the other side, so that 
I can easily get from here to my new base location. Where am I going to build my new base? I have no idea as of yet. But this is an excellent segue for us to move over from magic, psi, and blood magic into tech, RF tools, and we're going to be doing both this uh, on this server. So I hope you look forward to that. For now, it's time to wrap up the episode. So I will see you next time. And I hope you really liked this episode. If you did, leave a like and a comment down below. It really helps me out. Subscribe for more content all the time. Every single day we're going to be doing this stuff. Uh, fun stuff. Fun builds. Excellent automation. All that sort of stuff. Guys, I hope I see you next time. As always, this is Mizuna signing off.